What does it look like, the future of consumers? Well, they've got new roles. They're publishers, as many of you are in the room. We all probably heard of the United Breaks Guitars um, example, where there was a musician on a United flight in the United States, and he looked out the window, and he saw the baggage handlers, like, throwing his guitars. And they're probably thinking to themselves, hey, what's this guy going to do? So he makes a video, which becomes a YouTube sensation and gets two million hits. United Breaks Guitars. So he makes another one. United Breaks Guitars 2. So he makes another one, United Breaks Guitars 3, which are all so popular he starts selling them on Amazon. We're all at, we are all now distributors. We can retweet from our iPhones. We can recommend from Facebook. Consumers are also curators. Have you, has everyone seen this wonderful spot from Wyden and Kennedy? It is so funny. I watch it like three or four times and I walk around my house the whole time going, I'm on a horse. But the point is, look at the numbers. They create a traditional television commercial and they get 10 and a half million views in a few short weeks. Consumers are also disruptors. Who hasn't seen this spot? Write the Future by Nike? Absolutely incredible. The archetypal big spot from traditional advertising. Yet by running it through social media, they've had, actually, you know, I checked it last night, it's 16,900,000 views. So it's been like 2 million more in three days. Incredibly powerful, and yet Nike is not an official sponsor of the World Cup. And then finally, actually not fine, but agent, uh, customers are also the IP and R&D for the brand. What do I mean by that? Brands can now reach out to consumers and ask them for an idea or share an idea with them, and consumers can also share with them ideas that might improve the brand. For example, my Starbucks idea. And then finally, and importantly, consumers are becoming the moral compass for a brand. And this is a wonderful platform that Craig Davis in Australia uh, released a couple of months ago called Brand Karma. And what that does is it aggregates all these authoritative sources on a beha the behavior of a brand, including their carbon footprint, how they treat their employees, their corporate social responsibility programs. So before you go and buy a purchase, you can choose by sector, choose your brand, and see whether you really want to support what they're doing. So these are the new roles that consumers are playing. So what does that mean? Brands have new roles. Agencies have new roles. Consumers have new roles. What's the future going to look like? This is the last lesson. The evolution of revolution is contribution. Why? because we are in a codependent, interdependent, connected, digitized world. What we do affects someone else and vice versa. And it's simply a decision for us in this room whether we embrace that reality or not. Let's explore it further. What does it look like in terms of mindset? If we embrace it, we have to shift from being purely adversarial to recognizing our interdependence. For example, BICEP, which is a coalition of consumer product companies that have come together around the issue of climate change in the United States to work together. It means, from a creative point of view, we need to be competitive, but we also need to be collaborative, because we're smarter together than alone. For example, Nike Green Exchange, they just opened up all their R&D to other brands like Best Buy and Yahoo, so that we could all provide the solutions we need faster if we all have access to all that learning. We need to take a short-term vision. We have to pay our bills, but we also need to take a long-term vision. For example, this group, B Corporations in the United States, over 350 companies, a market capitalization of over $1.1 billion, 54 industries, and they've all rallied around a declaration of interdependence. The gist of which is, do business with someone the way you want someone to do business with you so we can build a better world together. We need an expanded definition of self-interest. I want everyone in this room to be as self-interested as ever, if not more so. But I also want you to define self-interest in terms of the reality of the world we live in, which is what we do affects somebody else and vice versa, in which case we need an expanded definition of self-interest that includes the greater good. But does that mean we have to get rid of our creativity? Well, let's take a look. Who recognizes this campaign, the UNICEF tap water campaign? People in the room recognize, yeah. Let's look at this one. 
Earth Hour. Are we aware of that one? What about the Million Project, the Education Project, using smartphones? What do all these three have in common? Right, they're all doing good. Education, conserving energy, water as a resource. They also all won titanium lines in the last three years. So we can do good work and be rewarded for it. There's even a, a Grand Prix for good this year. And finally, we need to marry the first principles of advertising with new media. I constantly come across people separating the two out. Traditional ad agency and social media is some sort of mutually exclusive proposition. But social media is not an end in itself. It's just another tool. So we are incredibly relevant in the advertising game, and we need to bring those hard-won lessons to bear on new media across the board, including social media.